Auriga, or the charioteer constellation, is one of the few constellations that, in historical records, shared a star with a neighboring constellation. In the International Astronomical Union star chart, you can see the star Gamma Aurigae on the border between Auriga and Taurus. Today, this star is most commonly known as Beta Tauri, but I like the idea of the star connecting both constellations because the name Auriga has the root word rig, which means harness or yoke. So I think it seems fitting that Auriga would be connected to the bull constellation, that is, Taurus. As the Earth rotates, constellations constantly move across the night sky. So if you get up early or stay up late, you can see stars that you wouldn't otherwise see. I do most of my stargazing between the hours of 9 and 11, or sometimes even earlier during the winter months. If you want to easily find Auriga during the evening hours, look for it in the winter or early spring. Around that time of night in December, it'll be in the eastern sky. And by April, you'll find him starting to descend into the western horizon. Auriga is fairly close to the ecliptic, which rises pretty high during winter nights. This means as he reaches his culmination in the night sky, or his highest point, you'll find Auriga not too far from your zenith. In other words, if you were to look up at about 9 p.m. on January 22nd, for example, Auriga would probably be pretty close to directly overhead. That is what zenith means, right overhead. Of course, that does depend on where you're veering the sky from. For those of us near or between the equator and Tropic of Cancer, we'll see him pretty high in the sky. If you're in the southern hemisphere, however, you'll have to look more towards the northern horizon. To find Auriga, look for five fairly bright stars forming a squished pentagon. As mentioned, these stars will be just east of the constellation Taurus. Remember, one of those stars connects the two. Check out my video on Taurus if you want to learn more about that constellation. Okay, find the V-shape that forms the head of Taurus, the bull, and follow his horns out to a star called Elnath, which is Arabic for the butting. Taurus is sort of headbutting Auriga, or maybe Auriga is, is riding Taurus? Anyway, once you've found Elnath, you've found Auriga. That's the star shared by the two constellations. Who is Auriga? As usual with constellations, there are many myths associated with Auriga. One Greek legend associates Auriga with Erichthonius of Athens, who was raised by the goddess Athena and was credited with inventing the chariot. In ancient Mesopotamia, the stars of Auriga represented a shepherd's crook. In fact, its brightest star, Capella, means she-goat or kid, and today Auriga is usually depicted holding a goat. What can you find in the constellation Auriga, or in this part of the sky? Here are a few stars and deep sky objects to look for as you observe Auriga. Alpha Aurigae is another name for the aforementioned Capella, which shines as the sixth brightest star in the night sky, at an apparent magnitude of about 0.05, according to Stellarium. I say that because star magnitudes do vary depending on the source, and some star magnitudes vary intrinsically because of the star or things in the night sky that may cover it. Capella is about 42 light years away. Although it looks like one star to the naked eye, it has been identified as a quadruple star system made up of two binary pairs. Binary stars, of course, are made up of two stars that are close enough to share gravitational orbits. Next we have Beta Aurigae, also called Menkalinan, which is Arabic for shoulder of the charioteer. It has an apparent magnitude of about 1.9. This makes it the second brightest star in Auriga, excluding Elnath, which is a little brighter but technically part of Taurus. Beta Aurigae is about 81 light years away. Now what about deep sky objects? There are several star clusters and nebulae in Auriga. The most noteworthy star clusters are Messier 36, 37, and 38. They are all open star clusters, which means they are not quite as compact as globular clusters, and they are more or less near the center of Auriga. These make great targets for binoculars or telescopes. 
M36 is the smallest of the three star clusters and it has an apparent magnitude of about 6. M37 is the farthest of the three at a distance of about 42,000 light years away. However, since it is home to so many stars, 150 actually, M37 is also the brightest open star cluster in Auriga with an apparent magnitude of 5.6. So there you go, M37, both the furthest star cluster and the brightest in Auriga. M38 is about 3,900 light years away and is the least concentrated of the main open star clusters in Auriga. Its apparent magnitude is about 6.4. Auriga is also home to the aptly named Spider Nebula and the nearby Fly Nebula. However, the brightest and most prominent nebula in Auriga is the Flaming Star Nebula, which is about 1,500 light years away and has a magnitude of about 6. Now, the upper limit of the human eye under clear, dark observing conditions is a magnitude of 6.5. That means it is possible that you could spot all four of Auriga's most notable deep sky objects without a telescope, which is pretty cool. Of course, they'll appear like a faint, maybe fuzzy star to the naked eye, so I recommend taking a telescope or binoculars. I'll provide a link to my current star gear recommendations in the description below. So next time you go outside, look for the charioteer Auriga and his companion star Capella, the she-goat. If you have a telescope, observe Auriga's notable open star clusters and see if you can find the flaming star nebula. Thank you for watching. Look up, keep learning, and remember to smile.